Hello again gamers. We're a few days into the season of the Soviet 14 and while other YouTubers are posting videos on guides and powerful guns, I thought it would be a good time to give the people another highly informative guide about the things that truly matter. This won't be another weapon review, instead I've decided to make another top 10 and this time it's about the top 10 rocks in Destiny 2. This time around, I rank the rocks on shape, color, originality, and kinetic force, as in how effective it would be if you tested it out on a drag in the EDZ. These categories were a product of group discussion, and we came to the conclusion that they were still more concrete than the categories used by the grass watching committee. Hey, fuck you. So, coming in at number 10, this rock on Nessus. As you can see, this rock very much resembles a rock. It's shaped like a rock, and if you heaved it out of the ground, it would probably do considerable damage to a dragon the EDZ. However, as this rock does look exactly like a rock, it is unoriginal and doesn't get any style points. 1 out of 10. Basic. Number 9. That rock on the floating island in the European aerial zone. This rock floats above the ground and is the perfect shape to hold in your hand. If you were a titan, you could throw it like a hammer. It's a clout chasing off white color, but unfortunately I did not capture any video of it while the event was still active, and if I have any files I'm not prepared to dig them up. So you'll just have to believe me. 3 out of 10. Number 8. This music in the Tangled Shore. This rock music in the Tangled Shore Lost Sector is the most original rock we have seen so far. I love listening to 6 space beats, but I'm not stoned enough to be able to tell you what the shape or color of this tune is. The vocals are solid though, and seem to be rocking the dregs exposed to it, so it gets a generous 3.1 out of 10. Number 7, Eris's Rock. Eris's Rock is a small bean shaped rock that glows green and has sort of a force field around it as well. It's pretty small, so I can't imagine it would do very much damage to anyone with more than 3 eyes. The first time we saw Eris's Rock was when Cade told Eris to get it off of his map. Eris. Get your rock off my map. Four years later, Cade is no longer with us. But, ironically, Iris Morn is now an important character and her rock is now always on our maps. She refused to be innovative though, so her originality score is cemented at zero. 4.5 out of 10. She does have a solid group of friends hanging out around her to see that cool bean though. Good for her. Friendship rocks. Number 6, the rock in the Dreaming City. This rock is relatively consistent in shape, even though it seems to have spent too much time in the bath and has pruned. It's a vibrant toothpaste color at the top and has a nice gradient going for it as well. This rock is special because it's the only one so far that creates its own white noise for nighttime dreaming. It has to take a penalty, however, as I have been told that this is actually an egg for the Wish Ender quest and therefore I am both salty for not having the bow and unable to determine if this rock is really just a rock. 6.69 out of 10. Number 5, the moon. The moon is a huge circle in the sky and is, in fact, a really big rock. It's great from afar, but if you get closer to the surface, you'll see there are actually many scarlet structures on its surface and some nice greens too. The moon score is a 10 for shape, 10 for color, however, according to Newton's third law of motion, the moon is always falling towards the fallen at the same time that they fall towards the moon because of gravity. So at all times the moon is hitting the fallen, which means the dregs are always being hit by that rock. But they survive and never take any damage, so I suppose it would get a 0 out of 10 for this category. Also, it's obvious that this moon is a blatant ripoff of the real moon, so it doesn't score very high there either, even if it is haunted. Not original, 7 out of 10. Number 4, Riven's Rock. Just like how Titans have comfort crayons to eat, Riven has herself a massive boulder that she cradles when she isn't battling. While it's hard to see it well, it scores pretty high in shape, pretty okay in color, and pretty high in kinetic force, since Riven can deck just about anyone with that if she really wants to. It scores high in originality, because it belongs to the very last of a godlike species of super beings that can bend reality at will, but also because it's not just a boulder, it's a rock. 7.3 out of 10. 
The pioneers used to ride those babies from number 3, Prometheus Lens. While I didn't participate in the time period where Lord of Wolves pretended like it wasn't a shotgun, I was around after Xur sold Prometheus Lens and the Crucible turned into a scene from Star Wars. Prometheus has a gem at the center of it which is used to focus light into a beam against opponents, and also to play with grass watchers. Hey, fuck you. It's shaped like all of the things on Akora's desk for some reason, and it's nearly transparent, which means it scores highly in both shape and colors since it's got some 1995 English rock band vibes going on. 8 out of 10. Number 2, Focus by Advance.gg because it fucking rocks. They just released V2 with scientifically backed results, so I can 100% recommend purchasing it. The containers have vibrant colors and are a nice rounded shape, and it's a much better alternative to snorting pop rocks. If you'd like to focus better on your games, go ahead and purchase some of it on their website. As for throwing it at a drag, it won't have much kinetic force, but if you use my code for 10% off, it won't hit your bank account so hard either. I would give this more than 10 for allowing me to study an entire semester of Spanish in 5 hours, but unfortunately, that would make this video illegitimate. So instead, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. But before we get to our number 1, I think it's a good time for some honorable mentions. Kick it Freeform Jazz! Now at number 1, we have Saint 14 Skull. The only possible way a man could thrust his own forehead into an ogre and launch it into the upper stratosphere is if his noggin is actually one of the most dense objects in the universe. What's the single most dense object you can think of? What has to be contained inside that head that's dense enough to pack that kind of a wallop? The answer is... a black hole. But we're not talking your average everyday titan brain here. Saint 14 is a refined individual that measures his milk to cereal proportions and never runs out of dip before he runs out of chips. He's even more dense than a black hole. How is this possible? That's because Saint 14's skull actually has the entire combined density of all of the people that think killing enemies in the Blight Public event will make it heroic. That's more mass than any of us can fathom. 10 out of 10 in every category. According to my YouTube statistics, 90% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed to me. So what are you doing? Click that subscribe button. It's right there. It's literally red. It should be so easy to find. I don't know what you're waiting for. Just, just click it. Just, just click it. Just click it. 